Welcome back to Budget and Bling, the series where we take a look at the Commander Precon decks and upgrade them for a little or a lot. Today we're going to take a look at the deck Buckle Up from Neon Dynasty, the Commander's Katori Pilot Prodigy. Let's rev our engines. <laughs> Try and say that with a little more emphasis. Racers, start your engines. The video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. Let's look at the budget and bling upgrades for Katori Pilot Prodigy's pre-con deck, Buckle Up. Before we get into it, big thanks to our sponsor, Dragon Shield. Shop Dragon Shield using the link down below and you'll be directly supporting our channel. Thanks to them for sponsoring. Let's take a look at Katori Pilot Prodigy's Buckle Up deck. We'll start by taking a look at the commander. A blue, a white, and one other for a Moonfolk Pilot 2-4. It says vehicles you control have crew 2, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact creature you control gains lifelink and vigilance until end of turn. With this deck, we've got two main strategies rolling. Vehicles and artifacts is one of them. With Katori's ability to crew 2 on any of your vehicles, that's pretty huge. You can get some vehicles that would normally require a really huge crew cost down and well within range of being competitive competitive and playable and artifacts if you've just got a certain amount of artifacts on the battlefield a lot of the cards in this pre-con deck are already going to have a lot of synergy with that so i want to lean into that i also think that the lifelink ability on katori is going to go underlooked any artifact creature gains lifelink and vigilance at the beginning of combat with katori on the battlefield this isn't just your vehicles so you can count on lifelink giving you life and triggering abilities that happen when you gain a certain amount of life. I think we can lean into that and get some great payoffs as well. What we're going to do is go through some budget additions that I think you can make to this deck and some really expensive or bling additions that I think you can make to this deck. And make sure to stick around till the end and I'll tell you what exactly I would cut from this deck to put some of these cards in. As always, make sure to comment down below what you think the most expensive card is going to be and you'll win a hundred Joel dollars. Let's take a look at the budget inclusions. We're going to have a lot of artifacts in this deck, especially once we make some additions to it. So I want to run cards like Jorah's Familiar. Jorah's Familiar says historic spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's artifacts, that's legendaries and sagas. So any of our artifacts, literally any artifact we play is going to be reduced by one less. That doesn't seem like a lot just looking at one artifact creature bird, but that can add up a lot over time. Bringing five mana spells, six mana spells down to four and five mana, that can make a huge difference. You should definitely include this under a dollar for this uncommon. Under a dollar for this common, Mirror Retriever, when it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. You'll find a lot of synergies. Mirror Retriever dies, it returns an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Maybe when you play that, it gets Retriever back from your graveyard to your hand or right onto the battlefield. You'll find a lot of nice little synergistic loops with cards like this, where it doesn't really matter if your stuff's getting removed. Mirror Retriever's just going to go grab it back anyway. Definitely include it in a deck like this under a dollar for this pickup. This is a more recent card, Bronze Guardian. It's under a dollar, but for five mana, this artifact is great in an artifact deck. It's got double strike. It's got ward two, so it's automatically stopping anything that targets it unless they pay an additional two to target it artifacts you control are going to get ward too so exact same thing on all your artifacts across the board plus bronze guardian's power is going to be equal to the number of artifacts you control it's got double strike it's got a growable power this is a home run for this deck it's only a dollar you definitely should pick this up before that card goes up in price because it's only been printed once to my knowledge thought monitor is a seven mana two two flyer construct but it's got affinity for artifacts meaning that it's cost is going to be reduced by how many artifacts you have on the battlefield when it enters the battlefield you're going to draw two cards this is the kind of spell that i would play in a synergistic deck like this you can run any spell any sorcery instant that's going to draw cards and draw you two cards for much cheaper than this but thought monitor is going to reduce its cost by the artifact synergies that you already have going it's going to then add to those artifact synergies even more by being an artifact creature on the battlefield once it's come in for hopefully a greatly reduced cost and draw you two more cards replacing itself and giving you an extra card i love this card at two bucks this is definitely the kind of thing that i would be putting into this deck at two bucks also is vidalkin archmage four mana for a zero two but whenever you cast 
an artifact spell, you draw a card. Very relevant because it's going to happen on the cast. Whether or not that spell resolves, you're still going to get to draw a card. Want that in this deck because there's going to be a lot of removal against your artifacts. Phryxian Metamorph is a $5 card. It's four mana for a 0-0, zero, zero, but it enters the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, period. That's your battlefield. That's your opponent's battlefield. Copy their best thing. Copy their thing that you could crucially use right now. Or just double up on one of your artifacts or creatures. I love that it also counts itself as an artifact regardless of what it copies. So it adds to the synergies that we're looking for. Phryxian Metamorph could come in as a copy of, let's just say a vanilla 6-6 with Trample. If Katori's on the battlefield at the beginning of combat on your turn... That 6-6 six, six with Trample is going to get lifelink and Vigilance. Suddenly, that's a huge threat. That is a game-changeable threat that must be answered. Phryxian Metamorph is fantastic in this deck. Five bucks, it's a great pickup. And in the budget section, we're going to end it with Spell Skite. Two mana for a 0-4. And for either two life or one blue mana, you can change a target of target spell or ability to Spell Skite. This card pulls direct damage, pulls destroy targets right to it instead of that doom blade going at your katori pilot prodigy instead that doom blade's going to hit your spell sky this is a little insurance policy you also don't need mana open for it to do its thing because you can just pay two life and commander two life is nothing spell sky at five bucks in an artifact creature deck i love this card I'm going to start the bling section with Big Daddy Memnarch here. Seven mana for a four five. You can pay three mana with two blue included in that cost for target permanent to become an artifact. And why would we want to do that? Well, because for four mana, we can then gain control of target artifacts. This is a $10 card, and it represents a creature that must be answered. Because if you have enough mana, when this comes onto the battlefield for seven, if you've got another seven on top of that, you're automatically stealing whatever it is the best thing on your opponent's side of the battlefield. Or if you untap with this, you're definitely going to be able to steal something. People have to answer this. Your opponent's must answer this or it's going to turn into a theft machine where you're just going to gain control of every good thing on the battlefield 10 bucks for that walking ballista is a 16 dollar card but walking ballista is like a combo king in all of these decks it gets x plus one plus one counters when you play it onto the battlefield four mana adds you another plus one counter on it and you can remove a plus one counter to deal a damage to any target so what we're going to do with this is obviously we're going to look at it and say oh cool artifact that auto automatically synergizes with our deck but we talked about lifelink katori pilot prodigy at the beginning of combat on your turn target artifact creature you control gains lifelink and vigilance so walking ballistas on the battlefield katori gives it lifelink suddenly if you've got something like heliod on the battlefield i told you we were going to lean into the lifelink thing a little bit heliod whenever you gain life you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control so walking ballista removes a counter deals a damage because it's got lifelink you gain a life because heliod sees you gain life you're going to put a plus one plus one counter back onto walking ballista and you've got yourself an infinite damage loop that's just a nice little three card combo there heliod can actually do it with walking ballista without katori if you've got two mana to give it lifelink until end of turn with heliod's bottom ability there but with katori on the battlefield you've got a little sidestep of a freeway of giving walking ballista lifelink so that you can achieve this combo $16 for walking ballista $18 for heliod sun crowned if we're talking about the lifelink thing let's go ahead and keep it going and run cards like archangel of thune whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control yeah we're going to lean into the lifelink thing a little bit all of our creatures are going to be growing every time we're gaining life because katori is going to give whatever artifact creature is attacking lifelink so we can count on it that's what you want to have with your synergies is abilities you can count on and then we're going to build around those that's what i like about katori's second ability archangel of thune is 21 dollars for plus one plus one counters on each creature you control every time you gain life and then if we're talking about a lifelink deck this is one of the best one drops that you can possibly run one mana for a lifelinking one one as long as you have 30 or more life it gets plus five plus five and has flying yeah in commander that's a little broken you start at 40 life saracen is fantastic in a deck like this 24 dollars for that one also 24 dollars for resplendent angel two white and one other for a three three flyer and at the beginning of each end step if you gained five or more life this turn create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance we are going to be creating four four so often off this i feel most of the vehicles that we're going to be attacking through with that already come in the deck 
you can notice that we're not really talking a lot about vehicles at all because it's already got a lot of great ones in the deck ready to go. But if they're getting lifelink from Katori punching in for five, as long as they're hitting a creature that's blocking or a player, you're also then going to create a 4-4 four, four angel creature token with flying. Plus, it's got a little built-in backup plan Resplendent Angel does to give itself plus two, plus two in lifelink for six mana so that you can achieve that five gained life if you want to and create four fours off of just Resplendent Angel in and of itself. 24 bucks for this one. I would seriously consider this for this vehicle artifact life gain deck if you've got the budget to put cards like that in it. As per Sentinel, it's a $21 card. It's a one mana one one, but whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell, you draw a card unless that player pays X where X is Esper, Esper Sentinel's power. It's an artifact creature. It draws you cards. This is definitely a fantastic creature to put in here. I've seen games where this comes down early and it completely takes over the game just because that player's filling up their hands so much. $21 for Esper Sentinel. And until it's reprinted, that's a card that's just going to go up in price. In the bling section, here it is. I told you to comment down below. Let me know if you were right and I'll send you a coupon for a Joel. 100 Joel bucks. Lightsteel Colossus. We are playing artifact creatures. We are cheating in artifacts where we can. We are trying to reduce the cost of artifacts with cards like Joyra's Familiar. Let's play an 11-11 with Trample Infect and Indestructible. How about that? Let's win the game that way. It's a giant robot mech deck. I want the top end of this to be me slamming down a giant robot mech. That's all I want. $46 for Blightsteel Colossus, but I love this creature. There's some really cool bling versions that you can pick up as well. I like it in this deck. I like it in this deck. What if it also had lifelink from Katori? That's pretty nuts. First off, this one's going to seem a little weird, but I would cut armed and armored from this deck. Vehicles you control become artifact creatures until end of turn. Choose a dwarf you control, attach any number of equipment you control to it. We're not really, you know, hugely leaning on dwarf synergies. We're not, you know, hugely even leaning on vehicles. It's kind of strange for me, but Katori... I like vehicles as like a side plan. I don't really like it as the main plan. I really like artifact creatures and artifact synergies as the main plan with vehicles as a side plan. But with vehicles being a side plan, armed and armored really doesn't work that well because it's just a one-time effect. They become artifact creatures until end of turn. It's a fine gotcha, but even at two mana, I just don't think we're running enough artifact creature vehicles to see this make a huge impact i want like 20 or 25 of whatever synergistic tribal thing i'm putting into my deck for the payoffs to really be worth it armed and armored is not going to see that many vehicles in our deck period and especially not that many out on the battlefield over the course of a game anyway so i would end up cutting that from this deck crush contraband look this is a good card four mana instant spell exile an artifact exile an enchantment you can do both for still four mana this is a fine card me saying cut this really speaks to how well these pre-cons are being built nowadays they're mostly powerful right out of the box they're pretty much good to go like eight to ten cards are questionable and those are basically the ones i'm suggesting here that you cut crush contraband's good it's just not a synergistic play and i love how much synergy is already in here and how much more we could add and lean into that and so i would just say cut crush contraband find an artifact creature that etbs and destroys an artifact or EP etbs and destroys an enchantment that's kind of where you want to lean with your synergies find the cards that are your synergy so artifacts in our case or artifact creatures most specifically and then see if you can find the abilities that you would want on spells like crush crush contraband find those on your synergistic plays that's how you should be looking at building any deck not just this one this is a fine card draw two cards it's got affinity for artifacts so it's going to cost one less for each artifact you control again i just i think there's better ways that we can draw cards let's draw cards off of artifacts you know i would cut thought cast from this deck i don't really like dance of the mans personally i think some people really like it you're returning artifacts and enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield automatically they turn into four fours i just don't really like cards like this that are really counting on it to be like turn 12 to 15 for it to really pay off i want cards that when i'm drawing them on turn three or four i'm not like well that's gonna sit in my hand and i'm either gonna cast it and just get a little bit of value out of it and it's not gonna be the big haymaker that it looks like on the card or it's just going to be in my hand and I'm never really going to get to cast it anyway. So I would cut Dance of the Mance. I also really don't love Arcanist's Owl in this. I know I've been saying find artifact creatures that do the things you want them to do. 
But looking at the top four and only putting an artifact or enchantment from among them into your hand, there's lots of ways with artifacts and other artifact creatures that you can pull the land if you need it or a creature that's not an artifact or enchantment if you need it. Arcanist Owl is fine. It's probably of all of the cards that I'm going to tell you to cut. This has got the most argument for still just staying in the deck because it will ramp you a little bit, which is nice. But I just, I'm not a huge fan of it, and I would say cut it. Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is a card that I just personally despise. It never does what I want it to do. It always leaves their best thing on the battlefield anyway. And so even though it's wiping everything except for an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, a planeswalker off of everyone's battlefield, just giving them that choice of keeping around their best things really feels bad most of the time. This always ends up, when I play these pre-cons unaltered, this always ends up just sitting in my hand until I eventually have nothing else to do and I'm like, I just, I guess I'll cast Cataclysmic Gear Hulk and pass. So I always end up chopping this out of the deck anytime I see it in these pre-cons and I see it in these pre-cons a lot. Jace Architect of Thought made me go, huh, when I saw it. I really don't understand it in this pre-con. It doesn't have any synergy to anything that we're doing. It's reducing attacks of creatures and you get to give an opponent a choice of what of the three cards you get into your hand. And then the ultimate, you just don't count on an ultimate for a Planeswalker. So who cares what it is? It has no synergy. This is the quickest cut of the entire deck. Make sure that it happens. And then Colossal Plow, besides being something that happened to your mom last night, this is not a vehicle that I particularly like. That three toughness really makes it tough to survive. It does get a great attack trigger of three mana and three life gained. That's pretty cool and that's synergistic. Again, you're hitting it with that six life link even if they do block it. This is just a vehicle I don't particularly like. If you don't have Katori on the battlefield, crew six kind of rough. That's, that's not where you want to be. I would cut this from the deck and put in like any other vehicle you want to that's not already in there. God, these decks out of the box, they're so powerful, right? They're getting better and better. It's getting harder and harder to make these videos because when I go to cut stuff, I'm like, ah, this, I guess we're just gonna do a little minor upgrade on this card and a little minor upgrade on this card. But nonetheless, I have a great time making these videos. If you like them, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you like the channel. And if you like the channel so much you wanna support it, go check out our Patreon. We got a commander league that plays these pre -con month over month supported by prize support from our patreon make sure you go check that out other than that i'm tapped out and i'll catch you later